Despite the occasional rage quit, trying to speed run The Last of Us can have that effect, it's not really like me to get triggered. In most triggery situations, the most effective safety valve for me is to walk away from it, not get involved. But that isn't what you might think of as a flat refusal to do anything. It's just um, a default strategy, an opening gambit, if you like. But it's one that incorporates a kind of waiting game. And sometimes, as is the case here, there's that tiny detail which is just enough to make me do something, to speak out. Regular viewers of my gaming streams know I have little time for breakthrough gaming. But here's the thing. If somebody wants to use YouTube to make themselves look a bit stupid, well, fine. Um, anyway, a few days before I decided to make this video, he posted one. Um, it came after a recent offhand comment from Gustavo Santolaya. Oh, and Breakthrough, as a self-professed expert on all things The Last of Us, you could at least pronounce his name correctly. Granted, it isn't the easiest name to get right, but you are the expert. Uh, where was I? Oh yes. So, Gustavo commented that the sequel is coming, in his words, very soon. Perhaps predictably, Breakthrough immediately jumped on this with the usual leap of ill-considered logic. But the worst thing, and I guess this was my trigger, came via three words added to the video title. I was right. He is right about nothing. Very soon has no context. To those of us attracted by the appropriateness of a June release, March would be very soon. To those who suggest anything before 2020 is outrageously optimistic, December this year would be very soon. Equally, very soon could simply be Gustavo's way of saying, I'm not telling you. And this is something Breakthrough remains singularly unable to grasp. Everybody associated with the production of the sequel is bound by a non-disclosure agreement. Unless officially sanctioned by Naughty Dog or Sony to do so, they are legally obliged to give away no information. These apparent leaks or unguarded comments are not what they appear to be. In most cases they are pre-approved and will be deliberately abstruse or misleading. In short, very soon doesn't mean anything at all. His video isn't entirely clickbaiting crap. Thankfully, to lighten the mood, we are also treated to some high quality, if unintentional, comedy. You see, to justify the meaning of very soon, he refers to an earlier prediction and backs it up with both an untruth and a frankly hilarious way of using it as evidence. I say untruth, perhaps that's a little harsh. In reality, it's just an unknown. Breakthrough tells us Neil Druckmann is deeply religious. Now, this has never been openly stated. He is of Jewish upbringing, but there is nothing to say that faith plays a central role in his life. Indeed, if you write a story, The Last of Us, littered with profanities, brutal violence, and a 14-year-old girl looking at a gay porn magazine, uh, chances are you're not too bothered about how the deeply religious people might react. But look, it doesn't matter. Neil may or may not be deeply religious. Oh, incidentally, contrary to what Breakthrough claims, the sequel is not all about religion. All we know, all we've been told, is that it will explore some religious themes. It's likely the Seraphites, who appear to be antagonists, will provide an opportunity to comment on the good and bad aspects of faith. But they are by no means the whole story. So, back to very soon. Breakthrough has, for a long time, been convinced that because the original game was released quite close to Father's Day and the DLC left behind launched close to Valentine's Day, the sequel must come on or close to Mother's Day. He conveniently omits to mention when the remastered version of the game appeared, but we'll let that go. His assertion of Neil Druckmann's fervent faith is immediately shown as proof that the sequel must be scheduled for Mother's Day. As anyone with an IQ in double figures will point out, these annual celebrations have as much to do with religion as wear jeans to the office day. It seems he can't get his head around this simple fact. There will always be clickbait. 
Far from being a problem for the likes of YouTube, it is a vital revenue source. Views are views, and all that matters is their number. The higher, the better. It's estimated that around 200 hours of content is uploaded every minute to YouTube. And data storage isn't free. A major contribution to covering the cost of this is advertising. And 100,000 views generates more ad revenue than, well, this, for example. So, while I despise clickbaiters, I understand their commercial value. What annoys me most about Breakthrough is his claim to know everything about The Last of Us. And people believe him. That's the real kicker. His acolytes think he really is some kind of authority with access to inside information. He isn't. It's flimsy guesswork, making illogical connections between things which are irrelevant and often incorrect or incorrectly interpreted. I know, I know, someone will point out he got this right or that right. Well, look, take enough stabs in the dark and you eventually hit something. It's a numbers game. That doesn't make you an expert. A few months ago, out of curiosity, I called in on Breakthrough live streaming gameplay while spouting his usual, you know, stuff. I'll make no comment about gameplay skills because they don't matter, but one thing was immediately apparent. I think the main section I watched was like the downtown fight, you know, the clicker and the four runners before you reach the subway. Having a good strat to deal with those infected doesn't make you an expert on the game law, but what does expose you is not knowing what it is you're supposed to do, where you should be going, and it was very clear that he didn't actually know the game. Now, does that matter all that much? In any other circumstances, no, not at all. But this is somebody who claims to be the number one source of information on The Last of Us. Okay, specifically part two. But if you're going to speculate anything about the sequel, you must have a deep knowledge of the original. You can play through this game hundreds of times and still discover things you hadn't noticed before, whether they're environmental details, artifacts, or optional dialogues. The game is packed with them, and a surprising number cross-reference each other, revealing extra detail about the world and its characters. To have a deep knowledge of the game, you need to find and understand most of these. To be the number one source, you need to find and fully understand all of them. Not to have the knowledge you actually need to understand the game, but to justify your claim that you know more than anyone else. Even Grant Vergler's outstanding cinematic series missed one of the most revealing dialogues in the game, where Ellie and Joel find bodies in a car close to the Pittsburgh quarantine checkpoint. Similarly, just after entering the science building at the UEC, Ellie asks Joel what he thinks the Firefly's medical procedure might be, but this is a notoriously difficult dialogue to trigger, as it doesn't come up as an optional one. You just have to be in the right place at the right time. Now, both of these, along with some other clues, give us vital information about Ellie's character and why it matters so much at the end of the story. Yes, of course, this is all fine detail, and like I said, you can miss a lot of stuff without severe detriment to your understanding of the game. But if you're going to label yourself as the expert, there is something else you have to do. Knowledge is not intelligence. It is the raw material from which you gain intelligence through interpretation and application. You process it. In fact, you can think of it as an industrial process. Turning crude oil into petrol, gasoline, uh, involves more than just pumping it through one piece of equipment. It goes through several stages, and it's called refining. Breakthrough made a truly comical video, claiming to prove the return of David in the sequel. Two things in particular seem to have made his mind up. In the first teaser, Elite sings a song which features a line loosely based on the Psalm of David. Um, at her feet is a machete, similar to the one with which she killed him. I've explained in a previous video why both of these are ridiculous, but there's no need to refer to it. What we're talking about here goes back to the uh, refinery idea. If gasoline comes from crude oil, Breakthrough attempts to make high-grade jet fuel from biscuits and a dog's barking. It's the wrong raw material, desperately gathered as a substitute for what he can't see or understand. Things like story narrative, character art and the like. He doesn't grasp the reason for David's role in the original game and why that role is complete by the time the spring chapter starts. 
Hey look, this has turned into a longer video than I intended. Let me wrap things up by saying something that may surprise you. If you're under the impression that I'm driven by some sort of hatred for breakthrough gaming, it really isn't that at all. He's young, I guess early to mid twenties. There are very few advantages to being an old git, but you do build up a willingness to be wrong and to admit it. In youth, the tendency is to take an opening stance of, I'm right about this, and then scrabble around for anything to justify it. You don't really look for evidence that would show the opposite. It's about ego. Breakthrough's ego appears to be the driving force behind what he does, but it's kind of inevitable for his age, and it's important to recognize that. But we should also recognize that, as a result, his videos consist only of ideas which tie in with what he wants to believe. And let's be fair, when it comes to clickbait, there is far worse out there, like that idiot who claims to have GTA 6. Uh, okay, look, that's it. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to follow my Twitch channel. The link is below uh, for The Last of Us live streams, because I do them quite a lot. And uh, hope to see you there. Bye.